our dear subscribers, our followers. I'm uh, glad to take this interview in the beginning of 2024 from my good friend mm -hmm. and uh, biggest partner of Cargo Flowers. Actually, one of the first uh, believers and supporters of the Cargo Flowers, Luis Carlos Bautista from Bogota, Colombia. Hi, Luis. Hello, man. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, very fine. I'm in uh, cold Amsterdam and you are in the very warm and sunny uh, Bogota. That's right. In the, in the right part of the world. Yes, that's why I always uh, surround myself with the people who is doing the right choices. <laughs> Luis, uh, for our subscribers, uh, you are the one who is doing the business from the Colombia, but I would like to take the opportunity to uh, explain or to show of, for the users of the platform Cargo Flowers, who is our partners and with whom we are working. And uh, of course, uh, the business is not only about the cargo aerial bills and payments claims it is also about the people uh, people uh, make a choice for the people and the, our platform is not a platform where a customer feel himself as a number so i want uh, people to understand with whom uh, cargo flowers is dealing and who is our partner so if you don't mind i have uh, 15 questions what i want to ask you for and then our subscribers can have a full picture about you, not about uh, not only as about the successful businessman, but also uh, as about the very good and uh, generous person. Uh, for uh, our subscribers, I want to notice something that uh, Luis has no clue which questions I'm going to ask him. So it's going to be for him a bit tough, but he's, uh, he's the guy who will always survive in the, any situation. So, uh, Luis, if you have an opportunity to choose one person in the whole world to whom you want to talk, just from the past or from someone who is living now from any country of the world, with whom you want to talk and have a dinner? Well, it's a good question. But uh, as far as you said, that uh, it's really important to 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 have this kind of a personal relationship and so on. So there is a a key people in the in the history that actually were doing this this kind of a job and moving not only people but also countries. So uh, actually, for the last days of December or oh, in December, I, I, I believe, was uh, one guy actually passed away, which is a uh, former U.S. Uh, politic, very, very known, which is uh, uh, Kissinger. He yeah. took part of uh, many, 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 many things that we know as United States right now in the, in the external politics. So I think this guy is quite smart, understands very, very, very well how the world is driving. And um, I think it's going to be a really, or could be a really good conversation. And actually I could learn a lot of things about how the people moves and how this mass psychology is going and uh, how to, to show the people how, you, how they need to do protecting their own interests because this is the this is the the the, the actually the quit of this uh, of this guy this guy was actually pulling the strings for many years and nobody knew it that's why it's interesting for me great great thank you thank you for your honest answer uh is there anything in your life in past what you want to change or was no. there anything any situation, any conversation, any deal, anything in your past that you want to change? Nothing, actually. The, the life you need to take as it comes. So, so far, no regrets. And uh, trying to do the best, actually, to avoid such regrets in the future. 
So I have a hundred percent sure that everything that I did and everything that it comes comes as it as it as. So I'm here still, and every single decision, bad or good, is making me the guy I am. You know. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Question number three. Uh, imagine that you had only one day left to live. How you will spend that day? I don't know, doing the things I like, doing the, doing the things I love and uh, without any thinking. Because as you know, in this business, you are always thinking what is going to happen, what is going to come, how you will react, how you will be prepared. But in this day, maybe I will just put my mind away and uh, enjoy the things that I like. Good movies, good music, good friends, good food. Important. I hope to be there if you will invite of course. me. <laughs> of course. Uh, if uh, you would have a chance to do something else, what you would like or what you could do if you are not in the perishables logistics or not in the cargo? Can you Maybe. imagine Easy. that you... Change your job. You see, I always wanted to 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 work uh, as per my profession. You know, I'm a MD, medical doctor. So for sure, always actually thrift just to 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 make some uh, social work for free or something on weekends. The problem is this business is, doesn't allow me to to do anything like that. But for sure, I will I will be in my profession, working on my profession. Okay. Uh, what do you consider yourself uh, best at? In I don't know. I think it's empathy. I believe that uh, if you feel that uh, every single body's business, which I'm actually, I'm a part of those businesses, um, for sure, if I feel, or I walking in the shoes of the customers, for sure, I will understand better the way of the business. So I mean, know that I'm a big part of, of those businesses and success of those businesses. So I'm always having empathy and uh, trying to feel every single business for every single person like my own. And uh, I don't want to cause any kind of harm to anybody of the opposite, actually. So I just need to help and make every single body's business profitable as they are mine. As your colleague who uh, did spend many years in the perishables, I know uh, what uh, happens when a customer is gone. And uh, my next question is, uh, what would people say about you at your funeral? What do you think? Uh, first of all, I need to check if somebody's going to visit that funeral, that's for sure. That's first. And second, At least I, don't one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope that uh, that every single body is having a, like an imagination or or um, some kind of a decision of who I am. So I will wonder, and actually I don't expect anybody to, to say something special. You know, every single body who's dead is always good. So I am expect that uh, somebody's going to tell good things, not bad things, but I don't know. I, I, I believe that uh, if I leave some kind of trace in my life and the people will talk about this, will be just nice to, to know that, that actually just touch somebody. But what they are going to tell, I really don't know. And to tell you the truth, I really don't care. <laughs> uh, did you ever did something in your life that you think afterwards that it was a shame it doesn't matter to say what it was but was there anything in your past that you feel yourself ashamed for actually no I told you I have no regrets so many things you know especially when you were teenagers so you are doing stupid things all the time. And uh, this is the kind of things that forge your character. 
But uh, I told you, I have no regrets, so I'm not ashamed of anything. You uh, mentioned about the teenager period. Yeah. What was your biggest uh, childhood dream? Do you remember My that? Dream? Actually, actually, always was thinking to, 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 I don't know why, but I think it's kind of a vocation, but uh, to help people. I always was kind of dreaming of help people. That's why I was actually in the university doing medicine, because it's about to help people, you know? To 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 help people overpass the the, the suffering and uh, all the things because at the end if you see the medicine you cannot cure many things but you cannot make their life uh, livable you know so I was kind of my dream was always try to get to help some people I'm still doing it you know yes so I'm living I'm living my dream uh, can you Tell me what is um, what are you most proud of in your life? It can be many things, but what is the Ooh. most? It's a, good question. It's, it's a it's a good question. I don't know. I'm proud of many things actually. So now in this very moment, I'm to tell you the truth. I'm proud of my company. I'm proud that the people that work with me are feeling good and uh, always they are saying, I actually never heard a complaint for the people who's working with me. And, you know, for in this instance, we have 26 families that depends on this job. So I'm, I'm proud that the people doesn't want to go to any other company. I'm proud because, you know, in this business, all the, the people, especially the people who's working in the in the operations, they are always changing jobs and so on. But um, now the people is calling and saying that they want to work because they heard the, 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 the environment of working this company is good. So I'm feeling really proud of it. This is this is my proud. You know, this company is kind of my child, you know, everything since the beginning. So, you know, how is everything and. And especially the responsibility that we got with with the people, and when I can accomplish this one, it makes me so so proud. I wanted to say the F word before proud, but uh, I prefer to say proud proud. Okay, then I will add the extra proud because Carga Flowers is also proud to have you. Thank you very a, much <laughs> as our partner. Uh, let's go to the question number ten. So it's just to give you some idea that we are almost finishing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the question numbers, is there something you will never do? Sure. Sell myself. So I will never do. I don't believe in uh, easy money. And uh, I try to make the right things always. And to do the things that uh, they need to be done as should be done you know so nothing left nothing right so just in the center so i will not sell myself good answer good answer uh the next question is we are all human being and uh, is there anything in your life that you think that i have a fear for what do you fear the most what you afraid of? Oh, to let to let down the people, as I tell you. So I'm I'm thinking that every single business that is working with me in my company are kind of mine. So always the the fear, and this is not only mine. I believe for everybody who's working in this business uh, with some sense of responsibility, they don't want to let down anybody. So this is the thing. I don't want to let down not my customers, not the people who's working with me, not my staff. Uh, I have a lot of responsibility on my shoulders, as you know. So that's why I, I take this burden happy and trying to do the best every single day. That's my biggest fright. Uh, my, my biggest fear. Sorry. Luis, what is the last photo in your phone? Do you want to check it or you already know it? I don't know. Maybe it was a screenshot this morning for somebody's um, statement or something like that. <laughs> yeah. This is the one. 
This is the one. Okay, yeah. good one. Good one. Yeah, I'm not I'm not so so good with photos, you know. So I'm not taking selfies, I'm not taking pictures of the sunset or something like that. So the thing is I'm using mostly for work. How many more years would you like to live? I don't know. I think I want to live enough years just to to be able to do the things by myself. I don't want anybody to to help me or to take me to the bathroom or something like that. That's something that I really don't want to somebody to do in, in for me. I mean, I don't know. I'm 45 years old. I'm still, I don't know, 25 years it will be enough just to be like a respectable human being in this world, you know. Uh, who is a bit um, tricky or heavy question. Uh, you can answer or you can say next. Okay. Have you ever lied? Of course, everybody. Yes. And uh, do you remember when it was for last? Last time I lied. Mm. Yes, uh, in my previous job, when somebody was asking me if I were if, if I was happy, and I said yes. Okay. Big lie. Big lie. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, the last question from mm -hmm. our fifteen uh, questions marathon. How much money do you need for happiness? It's not about money, you know. I don't need much to be happy. So I cannot I cannot make uh, accountability of happiness in money, but in moments and people surrounding you. So if you ask me a, a, a concrete amount of money, I cannot tell you. Then I will uh, a bit correct my questions. How many zeros should be behind the nine? <laughs> <laughs> as much as I can, of course, get, but as much as I always can enjoy it because, you know, I'm not uh, just collector of zeros. I prefer just to get uh, the life. And, and I told you, I don't need much to be happy. So, and you know that the last time I was really happy when uh, was when uh, we got uh, this lovely dinner back in Amsterdam. Yeah. So we, I, I was happy. I would like to make the uh, little at our traditional dinner in Amsterdam. Our is traditional. That's right. That's right. All right, good, uh, dear uh, followers, subscribers, watchers, and the fans of. Uh, Carga Flowers and our channel. Uh, this is the brief uh, overview about our partner, Luis Carlos Bautista. So you, now you know him a bit better as a person. So then let's go to the business. As uh, our uh, major partner from Colombia and Ecuador for the Carga Flowers, I want you to tell us a bit about the, how you see perspectives for the February. So we are planning with you to make uh, bi-weekly or uh, or uh, once in uh, three weeks, depends to the situation and how it's going to be busy. We are planning to do with you the uh, market overviews, especially for Colombia and Ecuador. Uh, you are located in uh, Colombia, but you have the also agency in Ecuador, so you are aware of the both uh, countries' uh, perishable situation. And uh, and you transport not only the flowers, but we are now talking about the cargo flowers. So how do you see the perspectives for the 14th February, Valentine's? So let's talk about first part of the February. And then in our next uh, review, we will talk about the second part of February, which is also important for the Central Asia and the Eastern Europe countries. So what is the perspectives you see in uh, uh, four weeks before the uh, last shipments will uh, departure? Actually, let's start with Colombia. You know, now the, the, there is a small twist plot twist in Ecuador about the, the, the situation. So 
In Colombia, as you know, Colombia is very important for the U.S. and seventy-five uh, percent of the of the flowers that are grown in Colombia are going to United States of America. So, talking with the farms, they said that they are uh, having a lot of flowers, a lot of uh, of requests of the customers. So they expect that they are going to have a really big, big uh, Valentine's Day. There is some additional airlines, you know, there is almost eight freighters daily into from Colombia to US, mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, Bogota and Medellin. So they have very big expectation uh, for US. For the rest of the world, uh, Europe is, as you know, in not the best situation. So uh, the, the orders from uh, the European customers are, let's say, conservative. Mm -hmm. So they are not uh, betting to get big volumes. And uh, many other countries doesn't have any, any Valentine's Day, which is also good for, for, for some instances, because, of course, they have um, in different periods, as you said, after 14th of February, uh, another kind of um, of a high seasons, and uh, in um, in Asia also they have different different uh, dates and uh, different celebrations which are not going to be at the same time of, of Valentine's Day. Um, for Ecuador now is you know the political situation is kind of difficult. Um, I was talking this morning with uh, some people from Ecuador, actually from uh, working in the in the airports, and uh, saying that how they how they are saying all the situation. They said that everything is now improving in in Quito, which is good for I mean for our business. Um, some people wanted to 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 cancel some flights, but at the end um, we have only one cancellation for this week. Two cancellations, sorry, for this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expect that everything is going to be normal, especially for for transit from the farms into the airport, because now they have some kind of situations that make that everything also goes uh, delayed or, I don't know, unstable, you know, so nobody can tell what is going to happen tomorrow or after tomorrow. But the thing is now Quito is a little bit more safe, which is good. Quito is you know, more focused in the, into the European market and uh, especially uh, Eastern Europe countries. Uh, we so far doesn't have information about um, additional flights. We have information yet a little bit of uh, higher rates as usual. So they always start not with not additional flights, but additional rates. So they prefer this way just to have a thermometer of, of what is going to happen in the in the market we don't have much numbers uh I'd, no if i put this uh in a in a um, in opposition of last year we always have some kind of uh provisions uh, pre-orders or whatever this year that we don't have much numbers but uh, we are just working a little bit as usual with what we happen what happened last year and how we are going to see a little bit of increasing this year. You know, it's always safer just to go up. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, please, can you please uh, name the airlines who is now going to fly uh, from Bogota to US for the Valentine's? Yes, of course. We have now flights. I mean, this is to US, which is the the the, the most important, as I told you. So we have now three times a week Amerijet, which is working from uh, actually from uh, middle of uh, December. So they are going to to stay, and they are offering three flights uh, weekly into 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 Miami. Uh, we have additional flights, of course, from uh, from Avianca. Uh, some some instances they are having flights from Calita Air, mm -hmm. which are freighters, as you know. Um, and uh, there is a couple more. Yesterday I had a, a meeting actually about this that they are going to offer not into Miami but into into Los Angeles because um, we used to have a very big airline which was um, Maser, 
-hmm. but Maser, they used to have three flights a week from Bogota to Los Angeles. Now they have only one. So we are really short in the, in the offer into LAX. So they are going to start actually next week having one or two flights a week. And after that, only passengers, of course. So we, we hope that they are going also to have some freighters additional for this one. Otherwise, it's going to be really tough. Luis, uh, this video will be watched uh, by, of course, professionals of our industry, and mm -hmm. but also some other people, uh, like uh, customers, people who has no that much experience in the shipping the flowers. They uh, most probably would like to know more about uh, some details. So let's uh, discuss about what destinations in US are flying flowers from the Bogota. As it's uh, traditionally is Miami. Yeah, but... this is the biggest hub, of course. Uh, Los Angeles is also important. And for, for some instances, also New York. That's it. We don't have much, uh, much other countries. Other, uh, sorry, other destination into the U.S. because of the of the logistics. How is how the logistics are built in the United States of America? So, and and I tell you a little bit of history for for also for your viewers so they can know and understand a little bit why Miami is uh, first the worst point in the U.S. because it's southern to receive flowers. It's hot. But everything is built in Miami to make the flowers happen, live, be fresh, be in cool rooms. So the logistics are working really, really, really well, well in, in Miami. And also we have a lot of uh, cargo that is coming for compensation. That means uh, Miami is kind of the door for Latin America. So every, for everything for import is coming through Miami. And... This is also the reason why most of the flights are going to Miami. And also it's more easy the, the, to pass the customs clearance, the PQ and all the agricultural treatments and so on. So the people understand the, the, the flower business. In many other destinations in the US, they don't know. So everything is going to quarantine, is going to be fumigated, it's going to be always a problem. So that's why Miami is the is the destination destination choice for everybody who's doing flowers. Even for fifty percent of the people who's in uh, Los Angeles, they prefer just to take a truck for five days and going from from Miami to Los Angeles. And uh, ninety percent of the cargo going into Canada, which is really far away, they prefer to go through Miami. So we have freighters going into Canada, but nobody uses for, for flowers. So mostly for fruits, which is really, really unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's, it's easier, faster, uh, straight, without over manipulation, but the people still prefer going through Miami. Uh, yeah, people are not very often open for the changes. So this is... That's right. That's right. So this, most, is, this is yeah. something that happens, for example, with customs in, in, in Canada first. Second, in Miami, as I told you, it's a hub. So happens something that uh, it's alike that happens in Amsterdam. So all the cargoes coming from Ecuador, from Colombia, uh, from some instances from Central America for fillers. So the people prefer just to take one full truck and ship everything into, into Canada instead of receive, let's say, roses from Colombia, uh, from Ecuador in different shipments. Oh, uh, let's see. Maybe Cargo Flowers uh, together with you can be a pioneer and we are going to ship directly to Canada to open this market. Sure. It will be a really big opportunity, I'm telling you. It's, it's going to be the thing. We have four freighters a week straight into into toronto so, so we can do anything uh, please back to me in uh, 45 days and uh, let me know maybe someone who watch this video now going to immediately to book the <laughs> charter that, to that right. will be amazing that will be really good we need to step you know to start step by step 
just to build up this this kind of market. But if we can do it, as you said, we are going to be pioneers. Yeah, but uh, Cargo Flowers is a worldwide platform, so we can do as much as we want together. Uh, in one question, which is maybe important for the people who is a, a bit outside of this perishable business or people who is mostly on the customer side. Uh, do you know approximately how many tons of flowers are flying to US from Colombia for Valentine only? Oh, it's uh, rough to say, but it's last year was, if I'm not wrong, over 3 million, 3 million kilos, I believe. So 3 million kilos, if we take the average weight of rows for like, let's say... Uh, a, full, a full box of uh, roses going to US, the weight is around 20, 22 kilos. So it's small boxes. Yeah, 20, 22 kilos and uh, 300 roses? Uh, yeah, could be a little bit less, 250, because smaller, smaller boxes, yeah. So... Oh. So you can see how many millions uh, of roses are flying from Colombia to US only for the Valentine and from the Ecuador or you believe that Ecuador is more oriented to Middle East, uh, uh, Far Europe. East and uh, Eastern Europe and uh, Western Europe? Yeah, you know, the, the, there were some uh, acquisitions for the past years and um, The roses actually going into US are a lot of amount right now, actually. So they're increasing every single year. I cannot you tell you exactly farms, which is the acquisitions. Yeah. I cannot tell you right now which is the, the market share of Ecuador into US. But uh, for sure I can tell you that it's two digit growth every single year. So it's really not bad. I don't know what is going to happen this year because uh, last year was a little bit um Not not atypical, but uh, kind of back to reality, because uh, you know after pandemics, uh, the, the the flowers were sending into actually the the people from Ecuador were sending into US was a lot was a huge amount, so also because of this the, the acquisitions of farms as as I told you before, but uh, because of demand of the US, and the demand lasted till the end of the pandemics, till summer uh, 2023, which is amazing. I mean, from there, they started with a really, really down uh, numbers into exports from Ecuador, I mean. And the numbers are not getting back again and actually didn't back again for the, for the rest of the year. So there is a, a big question mark now, what is going to happen for Valentine's into US? Because many people, you know, are not betting because they don't see the, the volumes of the cargo from Ecuador into, into the US. Yeah. So that's why it's going to be really nice to see what is going to happen. Uh, another question, as you know, the, since uh, uh, crisis between the Russia and the Ukraine, Yeah, the, uh, many of the uh, big worldwide corporations they uh, stop shipping to uh, Russia, yeah, or for Russian customers. Uh, we are not going to discuss the topic how some of the customers avoiding these bans and etc. This is not our business. Yeah, I guess there is uh, enough. Uh, people who is uh, investigating this. So let's do it without our presence. Yeah. But do you believe that this situation uh, in Ukraine, in Russia, and uh, made any e effect on the volume? Or do you see on the market that there is not a big decrease? So Because it's important question, as you know, and, and uh, our watchers know that Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan, and uh, former Soviet Union countries, they were like uh, one of the big consumers, uh, I guess, after the US and the Germany, of the 
roses and the carnations from the Ecuador and the Colombia. Yeah, you know, is we are going to have already in in a month, two years already of the of the of the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine, and um, at the beginning was tough, of course, because you know nobody knew how it's going to work all this uh, all this ban uh, the 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 swift the swift uh, banning for some Russian customers. So everything was a little bit tough at the beginning, but I believe that uh, everybody will fi always find the way just to make it. And the volumes were not so bad, actually. I can tell you that uh, actually they could be a little bit higher than the, than the other years. Um, what I saw really, really specific was the, the, the niche. So all the things change a little bit. Colombia became more like an exporter of carnations and hydrangeas. Uh, Ecuador was uh, actually is more consolidated in roses. And uh, it's actually what I saw. And uh, the movements are okay. I mean, the people is buying every single week. The people is not having problems with payments because you know the farms were a little bit aware about the situation but um, everybody was always finding the way you know how to make it and uh, for many people to tell you the truth also was as you said at, at the beginning uh, some banning of the big corporations for those destinations or for those customers so um, farms also did exactly the same so they said we are not going to ship anymore into Russia we are not going to, to ship anymore into Ukraine and so on and so on. So many other people overtook these, uh, these uh, businesses and uh, taking in consideration the, 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 um, the going down of the American market. Many people was actually happy and saving their, their businesses a little bit, sending into Russia and Ukraine. So, you know, everything is... As as we said, when when you cover your head, you you uncover your feet, and so on. So we just need to find a little bit of balance. But uh, for those customers, I think they're really they're re really doing well, increasing mm -hmm. volumes and uh, trying to survive. And but I believe, Luis, that uh, that you will share this my comment that uh, in the any case we do not. Uh, welcome any war any uh, children getting homeless and uh, any families get uh, uh separate and uh, and and all this is terrible doesn't matter yeah. where between uh, ukraine or russia or in syria or in iraq it is all not good yeah of course we i'm completely against of the war so i believe that there is more more other methods just to, to to solve any kind of problem or or incongruency or whatever, but not war, you know? The, the people doesn't need to die this way. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, let's do the quick overview over the European, Middle East and the Chinese market. Sure. What uh, is your prognosis for this year and how they were the past years and uh, what do you expect for these three markets? And of course, about the Australia. Australia is also now yeah. the, the flower country. So let's talk about these four destinations, uh, Europe, uh, Middle East, uh, China and Australia. Uh, there is also, like uh, some people said, if something happens in the world, along with this globalization and all, all everything that we have all together, so if you have a uh, flu in America, you are going to have fever in Asia. So it happens, actually, because, again, taking back to these uh, war conflicts and all the things that are happening in the world, uh, it is affecting a lot of markets. European market is, is really hit by this, you know, because the price is increased in energetics and this and that. And, and uh, sorry to say, but flowers are not a primary product just to buy, you know. So uh, so Europe was decreasing a little bit the, the, the volumes. 
uh, as I told you before, the people is more conservative, making numbers for for this uh, upcoming season. And uh, I believe that uh, Valentine's Day will be a thermometer just to know what is going to happen the rest of the world, the rest of the year. Sorry, because if the people is not getting into the big floral seasons, the rest of the year could be a little bit problematic. So this is about Europe. Uh, Middle East is uh, kind of continuing doing exactly the same uh, for over years. I saw the exactly the same numbers. So the people is kind of uh, really relaxed, let's say, or really comfortable taking the business as they come um, and uh, keeping it. For, let's say, for Asia, it's also the same uh, Japanese market, which was a really huge market in Colombia especially for carnations, are not the same as previous year because, uh, as you know, the devalu devaluation of the gen was really, really heavy. So the acquisition power of the, of the Japanese people is not exactly the same as years before. So, of course, it hits a little bit the volumes and the volumes are down a little bit in comparison of uh, other years. Um, and about Australia, which is really, really nice market because from Latin America, of course, it's far away. But uh, the problem is now that the rates are still high. So I can make a comparison for you. Before pandemics, we used to have a, a rate around $5 per kilo. Um, when COVID-19 started, and was difficult to get there. So the rates rise till 10, $15 per kilo. So three times more. And uh, by this moment, the rates are kind of still the same. So many people from Ecuador is paying over $8 per kilo to get into Australia. In Colombia, it gets a little bit better because we have these uh, land chili flights going through Santiago. So the rates we have is all around $5. But still, I mean, the rates are really high and uh, the volumes that we used to have before are not exactly the same because the, the, the flowers in Australia, not only for the price of the flowers, but also for the freight is going to be like a uh, golden weight, you know. So, uh, uh, Do you agree with me that uh, for Ecuadorian and the Colombian uh, flowers, uh, the uh situation with uh the middle east especially with dubai uh is changed since kenya get more uh more presence on the middle east market could be the the, the thing is that uh, in in middle east as you said dubai for example they used to buy mostly roses and uh, hydrangeas so hydrangeas, as you know, they are still buying in Colombia because we have these native uh, hydrangeas, whites, and they can just uh, put any color they like in this because it's a canvas anyway. Yeah. But the roses, they were all, always looking for really, really cheap roses. And um, the, the problem is that the, with the cost of the, of the freight, the, 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 the price was increasing heavily. Now I know that they are buying in Kenya and it's good. I mean, Colombia remain kept the, the, the hydrangea market for, for those markets. That's why I was telling you that the, the volumes are kind of the same. Maybe they change exchange from some roses for more hydrangeas. And, um, and in Ecuador is important as well for, for some kind of different varieties and mixes. And also for, for fillers. I mean, uh, Hipericum, uh, gypsum, so they also need this this kind of uh, stuff. So yes, of course. I mean, uh, Kenya did a really, really step forward and uh, was a little bit disruptive, especially because they are close yeah. to a lot of destination. Our, our, our flights are cheaper. I mean, from that from Latin America, and I think everybody need to find the niche. So and in uh, China. I was in China last year, and I'm uh, uh, preparing some uh, 
little documentary about my experience with the flower business in China. Mm -hmm. I believe that they have so many own varieties and they now grow a lot, which also affects their, all the import flowers, even from for Kenya. China, for, China, for China, it's a, it's a funny thing, you know, because maybe seven, six years ago, they started to import heavily, I mean, in, from, from Colombia and Ecuador. A lot of flowers, actually, uh, roses mainly. And uh, I remember that uh, we were struggling finding some spaces into Kunming, which is the, the the flower place in China, right? Flower capital of China. That's right. So the problem is that at the beginning, everybody was trying to find new customers. Even myself, I went to the to Shanghai a couple of times to 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 take place in these flower shows. But um, from one day to another, the, the the demand actually stopped. So many people were saying, "I don't know. You you should know better because you were there." that uh, they used to get the 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 color of the roses and uh, they will start producing these imported roses there as uh, i'm not surprised about this you know but i know that these people is actually having a really good logistics and almost everything that the, that they produce is for local consumption you know it's a lot of wow. of population in china and i know that also some uh, customers in japan are importing uh, especially carnations because okay. and also from yeah. Korea, from Singapore. That's right. That's oh, right. So this is well, what the customers yeah. are telling me because sometimes they don't find what they need here, so they need to go into the into the Chinese market. Oh. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a huge competitor for for every single producing country, you know, because anyway they they are massive. So this is a real in industry of flowers, you know, in, in, in Colombia and Ecuador, in Kenya, for instances, uh, everything is more, is more um, I don't know, traditional, let's say, you know, there is a lot of people taking, taking place or part of these processes in China. I think they have also, always, always robots working on this and less people always and uh, it's tough. So in a years we are going to see maybe a big hit from the Chinese from the Chinese production to get uh, a little bit over, especially Kenya because you know this is the comparison that they got right now for yes. for not not only for for quality but also for for cost of logistics. Luis, I can talk with you for days, not even for hours. <laughs> But uh, as you know, people like uh, short videos. So let's uh, follow the trend. I believe that our video is now almost for an hour. So and uh, but we cannot make a half an hour video because it's all interesting topics. So we cannot uh, leave it. But also you uh, have a very busy agenda. So let uh, allow me uh, please allow me to uh, announce what we discussed with you that we will make the several interviews we will mm -hmm. talk with you about how actually cargo works not for the professionals but mostly for the uh, customers Thomas. yes and that and how it works and how it should work uh, let's uh, discuss in the future with farms to know uh, how they work and I know that they have very close relationships with many farms in Ecuador and the Colombia so they are going to be our guests Perfect. and uh, let me uh, tell to everyone that uh, we are going to find many interesting topics and discuss them and uh, most probably when it's going to be chance I will fly to Colombia and Ecuador and we will take the several videos there and uh, we, and we will see how it all works we have no issues also to fly to Miami to see how it works and uh, let's keep in touch let's our viewers to uh, follow us uh, to get more interesting news and at the end of the day uh, I want to 
say that I'm very thankful to you for this uh, first interview and not the last. And uh, of course, I'm going to say that Karga Flowers is the uh, unique and the only uh, cargo platform for the flower business. And I'm happy that you know that with whom you are flying, you see the uh, documents, so you can uh, always see uh, who is the partners of the cargo flowers, but not only see the name on the aerial bill, but see the actual person who is behind it. So, and I wish you, Luis, to have some good rest before these heavy days. And uh, let's catch up soon again. And I wish to everyone that uh, flights will not delay, boxes will not damage, and flowers will be sold and money will be paid. That's right. That's right. This is the best wishes I ever heard. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, Luis, Thank let's keep in touch. Me. Thank sure. you. And, uh, see you next time soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.